So in addition to gain and voltage swing that we have been talking about up to now, for an amplifier to work properly, we need to actually look at another aspect in our design, and that is really related to input and output impedance of the amplifier. So I'm going to define them first, talk about their importance, and then we're going to talk, basically we're going to look at a few circuits as examples and calculate the input and output impedance of those circuits or, or those amplifiers. Um, what is input imp and output impedance? Well, if this is an amplifier, let's look at this example. Let's say that we have a microphone that looks like this, and we want to amplify the signal coming out of a microphone, likely to be a small signal, and we want to amplify it and then basically play it on a speaker, right? So a speaker like this. And let's say that we have designed this amplifier to have a gain of 10, so that if microphone, if you speak to this microphone, the microphone is going to generate some random signal that is proportionate to the volume of your sound. And then the, these uh, ups and downs are going to be amplified by a factor of 10, and they're going to appear here at the output of the amplifier, and they're going to be basically played by the speaker. Okay. Now, what do I want? In very simple terms, is that I want these, I want the gain of 10, right? But to get the gain of 10, the input and output impedance of this amplifier are actually of utmost importance. What is the input impedance? Me, input impedance means if I look into this amplifier from here, what kind of a resistance or what kind of impedance do I see? The reason that I say uh, impedance is that it might it includes sometimes, like in the advanced courses, it doesn't include only resistor, it also includes inductors and capacitors. It doesn't have only the real value, it also has uh, imaginary parts as well. That's why we call it impedance. But in this course, most of the time, Input impedance and input resistance means the same thing because we only deal with resistors and amplifiers that have resistors in them. Okay, but um, nonetheless, I'm going to use the term input impedance to basically talk about the more generic term. So generally, it means that if I look into this amplifier, basically uh, from from the input of the amplifier, what kind of impedance do I see for the rest of the circuit? Right? If I want to replace whatever I see from this point forward whatever is inside this box uh, from from basically the point of view of this node what kind of resistance do I see so you, you can imagine that it's kind of like a Tevin and equivalent resistance kind of a problem right similarly I can actually define the output impedance similar in a similar fashion that if uh, let me erase this box if I look from the output what kind of a resistance or what kind of an impedance do I see Okay, so that's the definition, and uh, it turns out that I want Z in as high as possible. And Z out to be as low as possible. The intuitive reason for that are written here. And the analytical, we're going to talk about it um, using this example. We're going to basically look at it using this example so that you can see why we need a very high Z in, ideally infinity, and a very low Z out, ideally zero ohms. Okay, what's the intuitive idea? What's the intuitive ex explanation? Well, at the input of an amplifier, the circuit must operate as a voltmeter because you're sensing a circuit. You're sensing the circuit... Um, let me actually erase all this stuff here because I want to write something else. So let's say that the voltage at the input, I'm going to call it Vx. So from here to ground, I'm going to call this Vx. And from here to ground, I'm going to call it Vy. Okay. So the voltage at the input, this Vx, I want this to be amplified by a factor of 10, and I want to basically have Vy to be 10 times bigger than Vx, right? But I want Vx to be the voltage that is generated by this microphone, right? I don't want any less than that. I don't want placement of my amplifier to be reducing or damping the uh, voltage that is generated by the by microphone. So I want to sense the voltage created by this microphone 
without disturbing it or in other terms without loading it okay um, at the preceding state loading the preceding state so the ideal input impedance has to be infinity what do i mean by that like let's let's look at it from the analytical point of view if looking into this impedance sorry looking into this amplifier the z in that i see is some finite value let's call it z in right or r in the input resistance and if this circuit is what represents my microphone meaning that it has some like basically voltage source and it has some internal resistance let's say 200 ohms that z in is going to appear here right my microphone is going to see just this circuit it doesn't care what's happening after the amplifier i'm going to model whatever is seen by the microphone as just one resistance and i'm going to call that z in and note that here is my vx right the voltage across this input resistance from the input node of the from node x to ground from the input node of the amplifier to ground so what is vx vx is just the voltage divider like it, it comes out of a voltage divider expression vx is really zn over zn plus 200 ohms times vm now you can see why i want my zn to be as high as possible because if z in is infinity i'm going to get uh, this ratio is going to be one so my vx and vm are going to be the same thing so basically i'm going to sense the voltage created by microphone and nothing less than that but imagine that so if basically if z in is equal to infinity then i can say that my vx is going to be almost equal to vm but if let's say z in is some number less than that let's say 200 ohms then you can see that vx is going to be vm divided by 2 and that's really bad news why because well it's true that like i might actually still design my amplifier to have a gain of 10 but then just by placing this amplifier and because of its low input resistance or low input impedance i have first divided my signal at the microphone by 2 and then amplified it by 10 then multiplied it by 10 so effectively i would get a gain of 5 10 divided by 2 right so this is the most important thing about the input impedance you want it to be very high so that you don't load you don't disturb the preceding stage okay now for the output impedance we have a very similar reason for the output impedance to have a very low value or like well, ideally zero value at the output the circuit might must behave like a voltage source right so at the input you're sensing this voltage at the microphone at the output you're generating a voltage that is 10 times uh, bigger than the voltage that you sensed and you want to provide this to the speaker i don't care if this speaker has um, i've modeled the speaker as an 8 ohm resistance for example you don't care if this 8 resistor has an 8 ohm resistance or 80 ohm or 8000 ohms right you want to have a voltage at the output that is 10 times bigger than what you sensed at the input right to make sure and then this means that uh, you want the output node the vy to have a value independent of what is connected to it and that's the definition of a voltage source voltage source was um, a, an element that we know that it has a voltage it creates a voltage no matter what is connected to it right if it was a 10 volt voltage source you had a 10 volts no matter what is connected to that source right so you want the output to be a voltage source and deliver a constant signal level to any load impedance and that because of that you want the internal impedance or the output impedance to be equal to zero again if you think about it this is how the circuit looks like at the output you have this internal or like z out the output impedance of your circuit or the amplifier sorry and then you have this voltage source that is equal to 10 times vx right so this is your vy which is equal to vy your vy is 10 vx and you have this z, z out and then well this is your uh basically well actually to be more to be more accurate this is your vy right the vy is the voltage across the 
8 ohm resistance at the output, right? So you internally, you multiply whatever you had at the node X at the input of your circuit by 10, and then you feed it to the output, but you know that you have this output impedance, right? Like it's the Tevin and equivalent circuit of your amplifier, right? So you have a voltage source and a resistor, the V Tevin and an R Tevin. Now VY is again, eight ohms divided by eight plus Z out times 10 VX, right? And now from here, you can see that if Z out is zero, therefore VY is equal to 10 VX. So we actually get the gain of 10. If Z out is anything other than zero, let's say um, it's 16, or like even higher than that, then my VY is going to be 10 VX times 8 over 24. So we have a we have an attenuation by factor of 3, right? Instead of gain of 10, we have 10 divided by 3, somewhere around 3.333, right? So now you can see the importance of input and output impedance. Both of them are very important to get the gain that we wanted when we, like you have an amplifier, you have designed this amplifier to have a gain of 10, and you have successfully done that. The problem is that when you connect this amplifier to the other stuff, meaning that, well, you design an amplifier to have a gain of 10, but you don't want it to be like, you don't want to put it in a museum. You want to actually use it. And when you want to use it, you connect it to some input source, input signal source and at the input side. And then at the output side, you connect it to some something, some load, right? Either a speaker or some other thing, right? At the end of the day, what you want to do is that you connect it to other stuff and you want to make sure that those other stuff are not going to affect your gain. To make sure of that, you have to make sure that your Z in as is as high as possible and your Z out is as low as possible. Of course, we're not we're never gonna get infinity and we're never gonna get zero, but we need to actually try to make them as high as possible and as low as possible uh, respectively. So we have already talked about this, but then let's actually uh, define it officially. So to do measurement of Z in and Z out, you actually have to do the same thing that you did with Tevin and equivalent resistors. So if you want to calculate the Z in for this box, so this box could be your amplifier, for example, or any other circuit, if you want to find the resistance seen into, so this R in or Z in, as I mentioned, this could be resistance, input resistance, or input impedance. Uh, if you want to find that, you just need to do, a, you need to connect the voltage source, test voltage source Vx, and the test current source Ix flowing through it, and then find Vx over Ix. And that's going to be your Zn. And note that I, my output is not connected to any load. So when you want to calculate the Zn, you keep the output open. For the Z out, uh, again, similar to any kind of uh, Tevin and equivalent resistance, you apply this Vx and Ix, and then you make sure that all the sources inside your circuit, all the independent sources, so independent sources in your circuit are zero and by the way uh doesn't hurt repeating this or re-emphasizing this that zeroing uh, a voltage source means uh, replacing it by short circuit and zeroing a current source means replacing it by open circuit so in this case we had a voltage source so at the input i connected uh, i shorted the voltage source the v in and i calculated r out by writing r out is equal to vx over Ix. We're going to solve some examples of this so that it becomes more and more clear.